Hi, welcome to Science Classroom Notes. Today we're looking at acid, base and buffer calculations. So uh, in this topic, in this unit, you may have learned at school um, how to uh, calculate the pH of certain um, acids, buffers uh, uh, and, and, and bases, of course. So also yeah, you, you're calculating pHs um, using that equation. Uh, 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 in this uh, in, in this topic and we're looking at what happens when the pH changes when you add small amounts of acid and uh, or base to a buffer so this is what we're going to be looking at today these are the calculations involved now as usual you I've put some chapters into this so you can look down and see which is more appropriate to you what which part you don't understand which part you need help with so you can pause uh, fast forward you can uh, Otherwise, just stay with me all the way through. I'll show you the mark scheme at the bottom at the end of, of, of this. But for now, you can uh, have, I'll show you the full question. It's a long question, it's about, worth about 18 marks. So here we go. Have a look. So, yeah, okay. Remember, you can pause at any time and you can uh, see how you get on by following my method, or you can go right to the end of the video and look at the mark scheme if you wish, whichever you prefer. Okay, there we go, total of 18 marks. Well, here, if you'd like to pause, but otherwise, stay with me and I'll go through each part now. Okay, so here we go. Beginning of this is, we're looking at um, uh, calculating the pH of something. So this question is about um, the pH of several solutions. Okay, so we're talking about different uh, quantities of uh, pH. But before we go on for anyway, the decoding or breaking down of this is, just remind ourselves what the pH mean. Well, pH, whoops, a P and a capital H, isn't it? Um, pH then is by definition log to the base H plus ion concentration. Okay, base uh, log to the base 10. Okay, so that's uh, on your calculator LOG log um, there as well. Now, one thing you must remember, and you must not just for this question, but for all your questions. All pH values are in two decimal places, nothing less. It has to be um, two h, uh, two sorry, two decimal places. So two numbers after the decimal place. Okay, let's let's have a look. Let's begin then. Begin with this. So it says write an expression for pH. We've already done that in our decoding or defining of what pH is. So we just write it in again. That would save some precious moments in your uh, assessments. Uh, any type of exam, test, etc. Let's go down to the next question. Which says calculate the pH of uh, HCl. Now HCl, got to remember, um, is a strong acid, so it will completely dissociate, fully dissociate. Um, and we've got one mole of the acid itself, which dissociates into one mole of H plus ions. So therefore, that concentration will be the same. Uh, for the H plus ion as it would of the HCl. So we can just go ahead and use that number. So pH uh, is equal to minus log to that value. Once you put this through to your, into your calculator, uh, you should have got a value of uh, 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 0 0.81. So by the looks of things, that's quite a, quite a concentrated acid, one could argue. Um, just have a go myself. Yep, yep, very concentrated. Uh, remember the minus, it's minus log base 10, so the minuses always cancel out. Okay, so your answer would have come up like this in your calculator. But remember, uh, this is minus log, so the, mi uh, lo uh, the minuses cancel out, leaves you with the answer of that. Remember, the way to think about this as well is think about the that linear scale you've got called the pH scale. Starts from zero, finishes at 13. Well, think about it. Do you see any negative numbers there? No. So take the negative numbers out if you have to in any calculation. Right, let's go on to part uh, double I. Now, I calculate the pH of a uh, um, solution found to uh, form from these quantities. Now, let's have a look. Let's decode this. I've got a volume of something, uh, volume of oh, HCl. Okay, that's it there. I've also got then, uh, oh, look, units conch of something. So conch of, well, HCl again. So, Straight away, I can see I can work out number of moles straight away. And then I've got another volume, the volume of water. So what we've got to do is look at vol, let's just call it vol of H2O, water. So what they want to do is calculate the pH of the solution formed when you put this acid, this concentration and this volume uh, is added to water. 
okay so when you add it in, in together so that's what you've got um one quick way you can do this because the number of moles are the same it's only a dilution you can consider this idea where c1 v1 could be volume one and concentration one which is equal to volume uh vol or two so you can use this uh, equation it works out quite well so if we rearrange things we can work out c2 c2 then is equal to c1 multiplied by v1 uh, divided by v2 so if we sub the numbers into this then uh, it becomes nice and easy 0 0.154 times 10 power minus 3 or divide by a thousand same thing of course and then i've got a volume of 990 times 10 to the minus 3 okay have a go at doing this you can pause the video but once you do this um you'll get a let's cancel these two cancel off of course you'll get a, a an answer of 1.56 times uh, uh sorry 1.54 times 10 to the minus three okay that's your answer there and um don't forget we're working out the ph and this is the concentration of course of the acid therefore this is moles per dm cubed that number needs to go into your ph equation because that's what it's asking you to calculate so 1.54 times 10 to the minus uh, 3 equals and once you put that into your calculator remember you need two decimal places as well when you're, when you're recording these things it comes in at minus 2.81 and of course get rid of the minus there's your answer okay three marks lovely shouldn't take too long to do uh, on that one right part b then let's have a look at part b so what we've got here now we've got um acid dissociation constant ah straight away alarm bells should be ringing uh i've got a ka that means it's a weak acid and the weak acid that they're quoting here is um is uh h c so we could write a quick equilibrium for this if you wish uh to see what's going on if i've then got um an equilibrium reaction there it is then i can write a ka for it of course it's similar to kc if you remember correctly um and then i can work out uh well concentration they want in this case so let's have a look at the numbers see what they've got well let's write the equation first so uh ka then is equal to um h plus concentration remember the square brackets uh x minus the salt conjugate salt divided by the concentration of the acid there they are that's a ka equation let's have a look at the numbers what we've we got here we've got a ka uh yeah there we go ka value you've got uh, constant temperature by the way not really um relevant here but it's it's constant that's the idea because uh, temperature will change the equilibrium position of course therefore changing ka so uh the ph value so we've got a ph value as well there it is um any other piece of information no, that's all they've given us now let's have a look because this is a weak acid we're assuming here that this is full dissociation so therefore the concentration of h plus ions and x minus ions are actually uh, the same so we can re re rewrite that equation as h squared okay that's the assumption that you're going to have to make and it is a very good very close assumption so it's fine we can go with that now uh it's asked us to work out the concentration of the this down here so that's what we want and um, therefore right so we rearrange the equation so we make uh h x the subject and the way to do that then is let's do it step by step i guess uh let's put uh so it'll be uh what will it be the rearranged equation will be H plus iron divided by oh, square Jess by K A. That's it. There we go. So put the numbers in then. So we do have a oh, problem here is we have a we have a, a pH but not a um, H plus iron concentration. Therefore, we need to work out the anti log minus anti log so i'm going to say minus 2.48 because you've got to minus that number so in your calculator what you need to write or what you need to uh, punch in is shift that log button and then minus that ph 2.48 that gives you a concentration that concentration then is equal to 3.31 times 10 to the minus power uh, 10 to the minus 
3. Put that into equation. So 3.31 times 10 to the minus 3. Remember to square the whole lot. Divided by our Ka. There it is. Where is it? Yes, yeah. 4.83 times 10 to the minus. Oh, difficult to see here. Minus 5. Make sure we get this right. Okay. Minus 5. Right, uh, so pop that into your calculator. What do you get then? You should have got an answer an answer of, well, let's break it down completely, make sure we do this. So uh, if I just do the squaring bit at the top first, oops, sorry about that, times. Um, 10 to the minus five divided by that Ka, oops, times 10 to the minus five. Uh, then do this sum, you should have ended up with 0 0.227 uh, moles per dm cube, of course, because that's, again, if they don't give you an opportunity to write the units and write them in any way in any exam. Right, four marks, a little bit involved, but I reckon you could, could have done that with uh, some decoding. I reckon you could have done that in under two minutes. Okay, so we saved yourself two minutes for some other question. Right, over to question C now. Now, C, explain why. Let's have a look here. So it says, explain why, um, to give reasons why, the pH of an acidic buffer hmm, remains almost constant. Of course, there's a slight change, which is reflected in the the, in the, uh, the two decimal places that you see. It's a very, very small change, but being fairly constant, despite addition of small amounts of um, sodium hydroxide. Now here, that's the definition of a buffer, isn't it? When you add small amounts of acid or a base, we get uh, very, very small changes to the pH of the buffer. Therefore, we can say uh, it's, it's resistant. It's, there's, there's no hardly no change in this. So explain why um, this happens. Well, the, the answer is if we think about what's going on, um, if I had something like um, an equilibrium to show this buffer. Now, remember, a buffer is a weak acid and it has its salt, okay? So the weak acid is this part and that's the salt. You would have to add the salt in. So for example, if you're making something like uh, uh, a buffer of sodium, uh, uh, of um, ethanoic acid, you'd add sodium ethanoic, or you just add sodium to ethanoic acid in excess, of course, and then you would get uh, a buffer uh, being made. So there's your uh, buffer, um, equilibrium there. Now, if I was, if I were to add hydroxide, sodium hydroxide to this, let me just write it over here, there's sodium hydroxide, which part of this would the sodium hydroxide react with? Well, it would react with the H plus ions to produce water. Therefore, the concentration of H plus ions will go down um, a little, okay? But what happens is because you have your um, supply of salt, okay, um, so your weak acid plus your salt. The way I like to sort of think about it, if you like, is you would have a constant supply and your salt is this. You'd have a constant supply of your salt. Um, so this concentration remains fairly fixed, so preventing this uh, equilibrium from shifting too much to the right-hand side. So what happens, even though this goes down slightly, because the, uh, H, uh, the salt concentration is very fixed, it prevents the equilibrium from shifting over uh, too much. So uh, the answering this question, that was a bit of theory for you. This, um, this, the, if you like this, this part, the bottom part here uh, acts as a reservoir or um, uh, 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 as, as a salt supply. So the sump, as I call it, like a reservoir, so it stops. So you have plenty of this high concentration of this resisting that change from going over. Yeah, you're going to get slight changes initially, but the equilibrium is going to more or less go back to its normal position because um, you've only adding small amounts of OH minus ions. So uh, answering the question here, then the idea is you, um, when you add OH minus ions, that removes H plus ions, which we just discussed, um, and uh, causing the correct uh, equilibrium then will then shift to the right. So then uh, when you add small amounts of it, it'll be shift to the right. Um, and that shift to the right instantaneously will happen, but it won't be for long because 
the H plus iron concentration, the A, A minus concentration cause the equilibrium shift back in the other direction. That's why it doesn't move too much. Right, so let's have a look at D. D then, okay, a bit more involved. So have a little read or pause the video if you have to. Let's see what we've got. We've got uh, dissociation constant Ka uh, for weak acid uh, Hy again, has the value of this. So we've got a Ka value here. Again, temperature is constant of room temperature. The buffer has uh, was prepared now by dissolving this many moles of the salt in a volume of concentration, uh, volume and concentration of a weak acid. So remember, a buffer is made up of its salt. There is an a, 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 NY and it's in its weak salt, which is uh, HY. OK, so that's uh, sodium. Uh, um, sodium ethanoate uh, HY if you like and the ethanoic acid is, uh, is is the weak acid in this that's the way to think about it right so let's have a look now uh, just a quick note here they could ask they could extend this question it's only worth four marks here for example they could make it worth possibly six marks and the way they could possibly do that is say well how would you work out the concentration of your salt they might give you a mass possibly and then a, a chemical formula for your salt so therefore you have to work out the number of moles by using that equation n is equal to m over r uh, they could ask that um, if they wanted to so be wary of that they could uh, even to a certain extent even use the equation n is equal to cv uh, i don't think that would, they would use something like that because that's a bit confusing for you guys but they could give you a concentration and a volume of your um, of your salt and uh, expect you to work out the number of moles so to work out this number okay so be wary of that um that is another common feature but this question doesn't have that they just tell you the number of moles so they're being kind of kind here i guess okay so let's have a look let's go on with this so we've got a ka we've got then the moles of your uh, salt then so mole of salt let's just call it nay just to help us here and or keep it in simple simple languages we'll call it y minus there you go that'll help y minus oops y minus okay so um we're quite lucky with that and let's go on from here um we then have a, a volume of something so vol what is it of of the weak acid hy and we have a conch as well then conch of hy straight away i can see i've got I can work out the number of moles of the weak acid straight away. That's the first thing. And let's just go through a little bit of theory. Again, if you know, um, if you're confident what you're doing, then uh, certainly uh, go ahead. But I'm just going to go through a quick, uh, quick amount of theory just on this right now. So uh, what we've got is if we write our equilibrium equation again, just to remind us, this is what we have. From this, like previously, we've just worked out the, we rearranged the equation to work out, or we can write the Ka equation for this. Um, which looks something like this from from just the previous question above okay just a quick reminder right let's move on from here then so um what they want us to do is calculate the ph of this buffer so um in order to calculate ph we need the h plus ion uh, h plus ion concentrations and looking at the numbers we've got here i've got moles of the acid i've got uh, i've got the moles of the salt OK, but what I don't have is, in fact, if you're looking at that question, this assumption is out the window here. You cannot assume that. Did you notice that? Um, this assumption is out the window here because you have a concentration of the salt. OK, so this is one of those occasions where squared doesn't work because you will have a concentration of uh, of the salt, which we'll talk about shortly. So, uh, right, so we've got this uh, equation then. We need to make uh, H plus ion uh, the subject here. So once we rearrange the equation, we will have this. So Ka, now I want to write this maybe a little bit differently to your, your teachers may have taught you this, but I'm going to show you the ratio of uh, the acid to the uh, salt concentration if you think about this this um, sort of factor here uh, over here this expression here if you like it's a concentration of the um, of the acid divided by the concentration of the salt this is 
this is like a, a ratio, isn't it? And it's a good way to compare because if we think about what is, uh, what governs H plus ions, it's really the ratio between these two, isn't it? Because the equilibrium is governed by the amount of acid, which is on the uh, um, reactant side and the amount of salt which is on the product side and remember as i said before the salt concentration is is, is is in a constant supply because there's a sump or a reservoir if you like of that so it keeps it fairly fairly, fairly still so in essence it's the amount of acid which governs the h plus ion really so this ratio can be quite useful to work to uh, help working this out so that's what it means right so uh let's have a look from here then so uh right now I've got a mole of Y. I, I can work out the uh, number of moles of, of acid here. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to, just for practice sake, I will. Um, 0 0.4283 times 10 to the, uh, oops, should put the 50 in, getting carried away there. Uh, 50 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, I could do that. But if I actually put in that equation into this, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's just rewrite that equation in that fashion. Uh, put the numbers in for now, times 10 to the power. Uh, this was um, on the screen. This was 10 to the minus five. Yep, same as before. Okay, so this is the constant uh, Ka here. Now, if I look at this, this is quite interesting. What I could do is, I can just remember the square brackets mean concentration. I've got moles. Therefore, what I need to do is actually, um, I could rearrange that equation and I could write concentration times volume, couldn't I? So I could have uh, the concentration of the acid multiplied by the volume, divided by the concentration times the volume of the salt. Now, if we think about the numbers that I have, um, the volumes will cancel out because they'll be the same. So if we put that all in and write this like this in the exam, make sure you do as well. Uh, include the Vs in this. Sorry, that should be five. Okay, include the Vs in this because the Vs will cancel out. And it's good practice to put them in, show the examiner that you know what those square brackets mean. Those square brackets then actually mean concentration, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, we can use the expression number of moles um, and not really do this part and work out the, um, uh, sorry, uh, use, work out the uh, concentration of the salt because we don't need it because the volumes will cancel out. That's the whole idea of this. So we can use the number of moles. So we've got the number of moles. Um, of the acid, which we calculated up here, uh, which was, I uh, didn't even tell you that answer, but into your calculator, if you pop that in, you should get a concentration of 0 0.014. Okay, and then we can put that number in directly into this equation to give us this. Okay, there's our ratio that I mentioned before of the salt by the, um, by the acid put the numbers in of course uh let's just do this long way around so 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5 times this this um uh value here so i've got v if i put v's in like that they will cancel out of course um we'll have a total number uh, value of 0 0.90 six eight remember to keep things in your calculator the full numbers if you do that you should end up with an answer of uh, 1.22 times 10 to the power minus five that's moles per dm cubed sub this into your ph equation two two times 10 to the minus five once you've done that um, you should get a pH value of minus 4.91. Uh, now remember, it's minus log, so they cancel out. So your answer is going to be, okay. So I've gone through it a long-winded way um, to do this. Now, there is another method, another way to do this, just depending on what you've learned at school, what you're confident with. But there's another method of working out these things called the um, henderson Hasselbach equation. Now, if you're, if you're, if you if you're confident with the, the previous method, then just carry on, just uh, forward the uh, 
the uh, video onto the next part, but I'm, I'm just going to go th uh, through a bit of this as well. Some some people prefer using this equation. If you want to learn a little bit more, keep listening. If not, then just move on. But uh, whichever whichever you feel you're confident with later on. Okay. So let's go through some derivation first. I'm going to go through some explanation of how to how um, you can use this equation. Uh, it's fairly straightforward in a way, but um, let's have a go. Let's do this. So if I've got um, my equilibrium set up for my uh, um, my uh, salt um, buffer. Okay, so there's my acid, H plus iron plus my salt. There it is, conjugate salt. What we can say then is our Ka equation will look like this. divided by that. That's what it looks like. Okay. Now, um, what we could do then is rearrange the equation, of course, to make uh, H plus I am the, uh, the subject, of course. So it'll be Ka and let's leave it now true fashion separately. Um, like this divided by minus concentration. Okay, so there's our ratio again, and uh, this is a, this is the equation. So there's our ratio. There's the um, acid at the top. Write the word acid here, just to remind us. And this is the salt concentration. Okay, that's what it means. There they are. Now, what we could do now, this is where this this Hasselbalch equation sort of kicks in and, and and sort of helps out. If 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 what we're trying to work out is the pH. Now, if I were to log this value here, then I could work out the pH directly, couldn't I? But then if I log this side, I have to log everything on the other side of the equal sign. So you must log both sides. And when you do this, you, you derive, you come up with an equation, which, which can be quite useful. And it looks like this. So if I was to log this side, um, it would be um, minus log H plus iron concentration, which is equal to the pH. We know that. But then I've got to log the Ka as well. So if I log the Ka value, and that's a minus as well, of course. Uh, if I if I do that, then logging this expression, it, it turns it around a little bit. So this is the maths bit, I guess, which we don't really have to worry about. But if you've noticed, what happens is you flip the acid concentration with the salt. So in effect, you've got salt concentration at the top divided by the concentration of your acid. Okay, uh, we're not going to go into the maths of that, but this it may be a quicker way for you to maybe um, work out how to uh, use this uh, this Henderson uh, Hasselbalch equation. So now all you do is just put the numbers in, literally, uh, into this equation. Um, so it's quite useful for that. Now, uh, again, as before, we'd have to work out some some bits to this, of course. So again, we've got this part we have to do where. You, you have to, you've got the volume, and you've got a concentration, you've got to work out the number of moles because we're working in moles with the salt as well. So with that equation, uh, N is equal to CV. Do the same thing as before, but I did with the uh, others. So the acid concentration, uh, acid number of moles, sorry, is this value, same as before. That goes straight into your equation and you've got the, uh, where's it gone? There it is. There's the uh, moles of your salt, okay, N of salt. So we've got those in. We can pop them into the equation and uh, work out a ratio. So, uh, so we've got two values to put in uh, here and here. And Ka, we've just got Ka. Uh, there's the Ka value there. So pop that in. We're trying to work out this. So let's go ahead and pop some numbers in. Um, minus log base. Like this. Okay, and then um, it'll be log Ka, which is 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5, multiplied by that ratio. Uh, sorry, added to that ratio, it's not multiplied, of course. Um, the concentration of this, uh, the salt. So if we look up here, it's here. So it's 0 0.5. 0 0.0236 divided by uh, 0 0.0214. Okay, 
There we go. We can use moles here because the volumes will be cancelled out if we use this expression anyway. Um, I forgot, I'll just write the log bit up at the top here so it doesn't get too cluttery. So this is it. This is where we are at. Um, if we have a, have a calculate the first bit, if we calculate the log part of this, actually, let's just do it all. So log this value, you'll end up with a number of 4.87 added to the log of this ratio. I'll do that separately for you. So if I divided these things up, zero, I should say, two, eight. Then once I've done that, 4.87 added to the log of this value comes in at zero point. And remember, it's a minus uh, number. It's always positive. So add it together. Once you add it together, you'll end up with same as before. So two methods, if you whichever ones you're comfortable with, if you're if you're if you're happy with the previous method, you just stick to that. If you're happy with the, this one, then stick to this one. It's not a problem. Okay, the next part of this question, uh, double I. Then I've just copied some um, uh, values across from from above. Obviously, because I can't flip backwards and forwards, a bit confusing. Here we go again. This time, what we've got then we've got uh, we've got our buffer solution, the same buffer solution but we're adding sodium hydroxide to this. So all these questions are linked. And if we recall what happens um, to the amount of, um, or to the equilibrium during one of these processes, well, let's look at this again. If we've got our equilibrium, which is this, our weak, weak acid with our salt, if I were to add OH minus ions to this, remember we affect the concentration of this. So this goes down, therefore the equilibrium will shift towards this way. So what happens then is the amount of salt then would actually increase. The concentration of the salt would increase and the concentration of the acid would decrease. Now, of course, this is instantaneous. We're looking at what happens when we just added our, our base in this case, or acid, depending on what we're adding. What happens to the instantaneous um, pH? How is it? Uh, we're showing how it's resisted in that small amount of time. And this is what happens. And this is what we do uh, to work out this. So what we need to do is we need to work out the new concentration of acid that's gone down and the new concentration of the salt that's gone up. And in order to do that, we would use this number because the amount of acid gone down and the amount of salt going down will be Again, this value here, the amount, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide put in. Again, they could, in the exam, give you um, a concentration and a volume. So be mindful of that. Here, they've kindly given us the, um, the moles. They've done the calculating for us, but they can do any of these things. They could even give you, again, once again, they could give you a mass and an MR. So be mindful, whatever they need you to use here. Make sure you use the appropriate... Uh, math okay let's go ahead now from the from um the question above the um the information that was given us to us we had this uh, information okay so uh, that's from above we the new piece of information is the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide we we're given which is this value so with all this together what we do is first of all let's look at the the decrease of this number, so 0 0.0214 minus five times 10 to the power four. And on this side, we're gonna have uh, an addition of um, this value, 0 0.0236, add um, to this uh, 5.00 times 10 to the minus four. Now you gotta remember, because we're adding small amounts of sodium hydroxide, it'll always be, um, the, the way to do it is always look at what you have minus what you're adding, okay? So it's so you don't get these two confused, okay? So once we do this calculation, you should end up with a, a value for the uh, decrease, I guess, is the way to think about it now, of, of our uh, of our um, acid then, because, because of the equilibrium shift, id to that per mole. And, and then over here, we've got an increase of our salt then, and uh, let's just write it here. Uh, that should be 0 0.241 moles. Okay, so we've got two new values now. And just like before, 
uh, in our traditional way of doing it. I'm not going to write the equation again. There's no point. I'm going to show the rearranged equation, what I'm going to be using, and then uh, Ka divided by, so as from before, all you do is sub the numbers in and should be able to work out uh, the new um, pH. Okay, so uh, which numbers am I putting here? Uh, that's this one, 0 0.0209 divided by 0 0.0241. There you go. Once you put those numbers in, then um, what you should have is 1.35 times 10 to the power minus 5 multiplied by, uh, let's have a look. Again, keep these numbers in your calculator. I'm rounding them off just to write on the piece of paper, which you should do as well. But keep them in your calculator. Uh, once you do this division, keep that number there. Then just plug in this number or multiply by this number and you should get H plus iron concentration which comes in at 1.17 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, again keep this in your calculator then all you're going to do is log that number log base 10 1.17 times 10 to the minus 5 once you put all those numbers in you should get a number of minus uh 4.93 more correctly so compared to compared to before um oops that should be a one that should be a three why did i write that it's my pen doing its funny things there you go three right so comparing it to uh, before the ph has then decreased so if i just go up step it was 4.91 now it's uh 4.93 so there is a slight change in pH a very small change maybe one could argue very insignificant change in pH now um, the other method the Hedison um, Hasselbeck again same thing I'm just going to uh, if you're confident with the previous um, way of calculating then you're not sure you don't want to use this method that's fine just go on to the the, the uh, mark scheme but I'm just going to quickly go over this method if you want to have a look at it it's exactly the same um, uh, anywhere you use this but I'm just going to go through the theory here so again, we've got um, our equilibrium like this. And as before, we're going to get a change. This is going to decrease while this is going to increase. Okay, so um, now what happens here as before, we're going to write the equation again. So H plus iron concentration uh, is that is equal to Ka. Look at the ratio again of the salt and... Um, acid like such Oops. should be minus y shouldn't it minus y there we go that's that's the uh expression now uh, uh henderson hasselback because we're trying to work out the ph if we log both sides then we'll end up with well minus log h plus iron conch is equal to the log of ka added to the log all right this uh, now this thing flips so the salt goes at the top and the acid goes at the bottom concentration of course or number of moles depending on what we have because the volumes will cancel out doesn't matter and this is the uh, expression again now like before you're going to have to do a bit of calculating and work out what um what this is um and if you think about this is we, we, uh, this is what you started off with. We've added this amount of um, sodium hydroxide to it. So what happens here is you subtract, of course, um, this the, the amount of this, which we brought down from above, which is 0 0.02, 0 0.0214 minus 5 times 10 to the minus 3, same as before. And over here, um, what we do again is um, uh, we take that number, this value here, 2 point, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.0236 minus 5 times 10 to the minus 3. And once you work those out, those can go into these numbers here. So let's put, put these numbers in. So log to the 10 H plus iron concentration is then equal to uh, log... 
1.35 times 10 to the minus 5 added to, and that's important, the log of this ratio, this new ratio. And once you get the numbers, and we'll cheat a little bit and go out and get the numbers from the previous uh, example. Yep, there they are. Um, log that ratio. So what I get, and remember, we've got to flip it as well. The salt goes at the top and the acid goes at the bottom. Um, 0 0.0241 divided by 0 0.0209 okay so once we've done all this calculating um what we'll have is the value for the log here becomes 4.871 added to um log of this value then works out as 1.153 once you um log this value remember to keep the numbering on your calculator don't um you can zero it, but you can use it um, as your memory function. Once you add the two together, you get an answer of that pH. Right. Okay. So I hope that helped um, on this. So whichever method you use, whichever you're confident with, it doesn't matter. Uh, they, they work, they're both the same and exam boards will accept either. It doesn't make any difference. Um, so here's the mark scheme. So have a look, please. Um, like, subscribe, let your friends know um, if they need help with this topic, by all means, um, put them through. Uh, you can share my uh, link with them, etc. Thank you for watching.